We're going to now look at how an ASP.NET Core 2 application is structured. So looking at the file layout and what everything basically, what their roles are. So over here on the right side, you can see I've got my dependencies expanded and this is my app. This is the solution for the app. So the solution encompasses multiple projects. So I can roll up this project and you can see I just have the one right now. Under dependencies, the things that we're going to be most concerned about are the NuGet package and the SDK. So under NuGet, you can see here that I've got the ASP.NET Core dot all. So that's everything I need for ASP.NET Core, hence the name. And you can see it's the 2.0 version of that as well. And this is a DLL that we saw in the slides from earlier. So everything is pretty compact as far as the dependencies. And this again, remember, is an empty templated project. So there's not going to be that much there anyway, but it just emphasizes the fact that there's not really a lot that you need in regards to dependencies for ASP.NET Core applications. Now you can expand these out to see their dependencies, but these are not files that you're going to need to manage and there's quite a few in there. And then if we go up here to our NuGet, we can expand that out and see the different dependencies that it's requiring. But these are all being rolled up into just single files. We don't have to, again, go out and manage those. So the next big section is the WW root, which I don't have anything in there. This is where your static files go. So if you have an index.html that you want to use, that would go there. And if you have, say, for example, Bootstrap, which we don't have here, but the ASP.NET Core MVC template will have it. They will put the jQuery files here, the any JavaScript files, CSS files, all those static files, you would see them in here. Then we have our program and startup file. So looking at the program file and scrolling on down. So we will get into middleware, but this is it right here. You'll notice this is quite smaller than probably what you're used to in regards to middleware. So where is the use cache drawer? Where is, for example, use IIS? Um, a lot of that is bundled up into here. So this file kind of kicks off the uh, application at startup. Then we can go into here. So this startup page here, we'll go to definition, and that's actually this one over here. So in this page, this is where the final call is occurring that it just is going to spit out a string that's going to have hello world inside of it. So if we run this now, that's what we'll see inside of our browser. All right, so that's our string, so not much to it. And down here, if I switch over to the web server, ASP.NET Core web server, this is basically like the console, and we can see the debugging information on info level that's coming out of that as well. So I am gonna go ahead and stop this. We have a few other things that are coming into the application. So services is here, we have app and environment. Environment's being used, so if we're in a development environment, we're gonna set a particular kind of exception page, which requires this app that came in, Application Builder. And what's happening with all of this right here, how we're getting these instances, we're not having to new them up, right? We're not having to do anything to them. They already have their instances and all the various dependencies that are required to make those instances work and give us access to these particular methods at runtime, that's using dependency injection. So the environment that's created when we run this application that works with Kestrel, which is the small web server that's built in basically with Visual Studio Code when you run your application, that is managing that dependency injection for us. So we get a lot of things for free in that case. So going back into our program file, we're going to next take a look at this right here in particular, and then start going through the life cycle of an ASP application because doesn't this look like the way that a command line application starts up as well, the beginning of a command line application. In fact, that's what this is. So we're gonna see how that kind of plays into an ASP.NET Core 2 application in our next lesson when we start looking at the life cycle of an ASP.NET Core 2 app.